Hi, today I wanted to go through a, a way to do dynamic queuing. Um, dynamic in the sense of the consumption of the queues uh, are really, really going to be dynamic. Um, in previous uh, videos that I've been doing, I've explained what a scale unit is, and I've been explaining uh, a dynamic batch size or a batch size um, for, for dequeuing. Um, and then on top of that, uh, we'll have uh, a frequency change. Um, so we can actually combine all three of those. Um, I have a library on GitHub and NuGet, um, which provides all three of those to be dynamic when you're dequeuing. So if we want to look at kind of what that would mean, um, you have your queue. And so the first thing that we can do is on the first call, um, we'll look at the batch and we'll start figuring out what the batch timing is. Um, and so when it, when it starts making the call, it'll start with the one um, as I described uh, in a previous video. But this can dynamically grow to up to 32 if we're talking about like an Azure storage queue. So this number will become dynamic based on the amount um, of time it takes to process that batch of messages. So that's the first way that we can enable uh, dynamic dequeuing. Secondly, um, we have uh, a frequency change. And so you can set this in code again. Um, so what you want to do is you want to look for like that minimum frequency and that maximum frequency. So you'd be looking at, um, if you're talking about kind of high priority data in my mind, um, we would look at like a one second to maybe 15 second interval. So what that means is that uh, it starts at the one second interval, um, but will actually slow down if there's no work. And if there is work adversely, it will speed up. Um, and become faster. So this is really trying to figure out the right rate at which your data is flowing through the system. So already between these two things, uh, there's a huge scale difference, right? So you can have 32 messages per second running, or you could have one message every 15 seconds running. So those are hugely dynamic ranges already. Um, but what I've done on top of that actually is what I would call a scale unit. Now, in terms of what a scale unit is from the server perspective, um, I look at this very similarly, where this is actually the number of threads on a server. The reason why it's a scale unit is it could actually have multiple tasks. So in the case of a queue, um, the scale unit is actually the creation of the queue as well as the dequeuer. Um, you won't really need to think about the creation of the queue, but just know that the scale unit can be a bunch of grouped tasks if need be. But a typical DQ scenario will just be the one dequeuer. So now on, on a high priority, um, and I'll get into the priorities really quickly, you could have two to four threads per server running. So that's threads. So two to four, th four threads per server running. So now you can see how dynamic this is. So you could have on the high end, you could have a server batching 32 messages per second, and it has two dequeuers, two consumers working. Um, so you're getting you know, approximately 64 messages per second per server. Um, and the reason why I've done this is because I think this is a really good way to manage um, your systems at the micro scale level. On top of this, um, if you look at then what a platform like Azure can provide, is it can actually do your horizontal scale um, and add you know, 100 servers or whatever. Um, so we'll just do like one to 100 as an example, right? So this could be scaling based on you know, CPU or memory usage out the number of boxes. And then each one of these boxes ends up actually having consumers that are running at different rates. Uh, but you get a nice steady flow over the number of boxes that would be running a, a, a pretty high volume uh, DQ rate. So that's how I look at this as like the micro. 
So that's in code, and this is like the macro level, so the server level, to really give you a robust way to do scalability. Um, and also, there's a whole bunch of cost uh, benefits potentially to this as well. Um, at your peak hours, you're running really fast, and at your low time frames, you're running much slower, um, but still giving you good throughput. And so what I've done in the library is there's actually a factory, and then it goes low, medium, and high. So these are kind of throughput rates um, for this. And really all they're defining is this is always going to try and be max, um, but frequency will change and scale unit would change. And the reason why these are good to change is because there's a cost associated with them. So by saying low, like if you did like an audit log or some really simple piece of data on low, you'd be looking at, um, I forget what it is off the top of my head, but it would be like, you know, 30 seconds to two minutes of frequency. And then you're gonna have one to two threads depending on the load on your queue. Um, and again, this, this scales up based on the messages the message count um, in the queue. Anyways, and then so on the high, this, this maps much more closely to this, where you'd have the one second to maybe 10 seconds, and then you'd have multiple threads running uh, that, that queue DQ rate. Um, so it makes it super easy to implement all of this dynamic, and you just have to choose the tier that you're interested in. The other cool thing about this is uh, this is done for storage queues as well as service bus. Um, I actually, on the GitHub wiki, there's actually the rate, the maximum and minimum rate that these will be dequeuing, as well as the minimum cost and the maximum cost. And so the idea here is being that basically this should be um, in like maybe the penny range per month. Um, this one maybe gets you to, let's say, a dollar per month. And then this one would be like, again, a factor of 10, maybe the $10 per month. Now, the costing varies um, based on your subscription as well as um, the amount of load that you have. Uh, but that's really just to give you an approximation of kind of what triggers uh, the throughput for each one of those. I hope that's helpful. I'll be putting a lot of links uh, in terms of how you can implement this and then where the source code and the NuGet packages. Um, but I've been using it really successfully for the last couple of years, and I mean, it's a really awesome way to DQ. I hope that helped. Um, hope to chat to you guys soon.